Yeah, <laughs> the golf shirt. The trifecta there, I see it. Yeah, that, that's like what I do, you know, it's my life. Mm -hmm. Wine, music, sports, So then cigars. you know right by where I live. I live right by QC's, that golf center. Every Wednesday. Yeah. What's up? They're doing some, like, renovation there. Yeah, too. a top golf they're putting in. They're getting rid of, like, half, more than half of that 18-hole golf course. I live right there. I could walk there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we eat at Calabazas over there, Calaveras. Calaveras, right Calabazas works too. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to the Venice room. Where's that one? It's just on the other side of the freeway. Yeah. It, yeah, you can cook your own steak there. And there's a bunch of like, there's a bunch of, you know, veteranos in there and stuff. But, you know, they're all, they're all, they're harmless. Yeah, they're harmless. Yeah. Guys, what's up? Are we on the air? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Solomon, we are on the air, baby boy. And I'm going to welcome us into this week. Welcome, everybody, August 2nd. We've got the beautifully talented Monique Flores in the building. Thank you, thank Comedian you. Comedian extraordinaire. If you haven't heard her work, check her out on YouTube right now. Well, not right now, but after the show. Trust me, yeah. she's hilarious. That's why she's here rocking with me and for us. So uh, thank you, sweet lady, for coming through. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. I never thought yeah. I'd be here with you, but here I am with Mellow Man Ace. Let's go. Right. Let's go, people. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, a couple claps off the rip. What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's been doing good the last few weeks. I've been, as you know, touring quite a bit, so I'm, I haven't been doing as many shows. But the good thing about um, owning your brand, you can do the shit whenever the fuck you want to. Amen. And, uh, and that's a blessing, right? So welcome to the show. Thank you. Super uh, excited to be here. Ah, appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, we have... Uh, a goodie bag for you here from our sponsors oh, at AB Chevy, which I'll give you afterwards, but this is all for you. Oh. If you want to learn how to play golf, there's a golf ball probably in there. All a right. Frisbee, if you haven't ever thrown a Frisbee. No, I have not. But uh, now that I have one, I might just join a club or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. We'll yeah, they're playing up. frisbee golf now. Did you know that? I, I've seen this. Uh, yeah. I hate that shit. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, who, but I've seen this who setup. Who could do that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. Let's get let's get right into it. You know what I mean. I don't want to waste too much time. Let's do um, it. It's a, it, what's today? Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Um, I know. I'm sure you got things to do. How you been? I've been good. I've been a little busy. I I just been back home for about a couple of weeks now. I was on tour in Texas. We did like a four city tour, which goes by so fast, but it's fun and tiring and 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 great all at the same time. So I will tell you this. Congratulations, number one and number two. Is the streets are talking about you. Dope. And they say you got next. In a, in a good way. In a good way. No, no, no. Of course in a good way. <laughs> okay. In terms of, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Being that one that they go to and, and rock with, fuck with heavy is Whoa. you got next. I'm, I've been, I've hey, I think I've done my dues. I'm ready for that next. I can't wait. Get so, down. Yeah. So let's get right into it. Raised the L.A. Well, raised everywhere, actually. I mean... Originally, I'm from Central California. I've lived in Southern California. Like Central Valley? Yeah, like Modesto, inland from Modesto. Yeah. A little town called Oakdale. Shout out Big O. I don't think anybody knows where that's at, but if you're on the 99, you hit Modesto, go about 45 minutes inland. Yeah. And that's where I grew up until I was around seven, eight-ish, moved to Stockton. And then from there, I've been in LA. Uh, well, I've been in Southern California, I say Orange County, San Gabriel Valley, and the Inland Empire since I was seven. So if you ever wanted to take in like a... A freestyle concert, you had to drive like almost an hour just to get there. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure, yeah. I mean, or Fresno or Stockton or San Jose, yeah. you know, that was the life. But I don't claim Los Angeles because I never really had that zip code, you know. But okay. I, I've always been in the area, yeah. down to drive. I mean, I went to high school and college in the Inland Empire. Yeah. But I've, and San, and San Gabriel Valley, those have been like probably the two major towns I've lived in. No mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so Central Valley is, is hometown. Yeah. Is that where you say where you could say that you honed your skills? I would say I honed my skills. Honestly, <clears throat> no, I think I honed my skills uh, in high school. You know, just people ask, when did you start realizing you were funny? And and I think for me, it was in high school at lunchtime. I would just be observing the, the most littlest things about somebody, 
and just making a joke about it, you know, whether it be like somebody's hairline or the way somebody tied their, sh I don't, I mean, I wasn't bullying them necessarily, yeah. but I was bullying them in my head. There was a gift. We just were sharpening this shit up. Yeah. You know, didn't know. and uh, so, yeah, I mean, and also my family, I just come from a really big family. So yeah. 11 brothers on both your mom's and, and, and father's sides, right? Yeah. Big migrant farmer, farm worker family. So I always joke about my grandmas because that's a lot of kid making. You know what I'm saying, Melody? Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> grandma. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So no, you know it's not surprising because we had a neighbor on Cypress Avenue, right across the street. They had eleven kids too. Yeah. And it's not it's not uh, normal, but it's not rare either. You know. That just sounds. I mean, at one point, at what point are you over? Well, it, it is kind you know? of rare. Like, it ah, is leave rare. me alone, dude. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, Latino families can get pretty big. You know yeah. What I mean? I, I, so I, I've just always had a big audience. Um, I am kind of like the, you know, making, getting a little, you know, I would impersonate my aunt. You know, I have uh, growing up. I talk about this in my stand up. My mom's very, very beautiful, and so are her sisters, and they were party girls. And I would just make fun of my aunt the way she would always be posing, and it would get like a lift. I would call it the Aunt Grace pose, you know, because she was just always just that, you know. Uh -huh. So I would get a lift out of the family, and I just noticed like, hey, impersonating people, making fun of people is gets a gets a rise out of people. So that's that's kind of where it started. Yeah. But uh, comedy itself, that didn't start till after college, after I was working for corporate and all that stuff. You know, I worked for big banks and uh, my Aunt Grace, the Aunt Grace pose. Yeah, she took me to this comedy show. And I, because, uh, see, I was in real mm. estate, right? I'm turning this into therapy. But, no, 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 good. <laughs> but, I, I need therapy, too, because, you know, I told you before, off screen. It's been a long summer, Mellow. I am broken as fuck, too, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what dude, I mean? Dude, somebody um, yeah. send some Mellow some CBD gummies. Yeah, please. Mm. ASAP. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, the real estate bubble kind of popped, and that was my avenue of money. And my aunt was like, hey, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And I was like, oh, you don't understand. I'm, not, I'm going to be making no more money, you know? And she was like, just come with me to this comedy when show. When did this happen? Like 2007. Right before the crash? Right after. I wrote it for right a while. I was I was yeah. blessed enough to like still be able to turn some things into money. But it was around 2000, 2007, eight-ish. I just was like, uh, and she took me to this comedy show. And she's like, I need a wingman. You know, the, the host is trying to holler at me. And I'm like, uh -huh. all right. So I go and I have like my glasses That's on. Cool I'm all despeinada. I'm feeling sorry for myself. And these, all the comics are trying to holler at my aunt after. I told you, like, she's a good-looking woman. Yeah. And they're like, what did you think of the comedy show? And she's like, well, you know what I think? And I knew what was coming. I'm like, oh, fuck, dude, she's going to say something about me. She's like, I think she's funnier than any of you guys. I've never done comedy ever. Uh -huh. It was just something that everybody's always encouraged me to do. That's something I wanted to do. Yeah. I had jokes in my head. And that's how it started. I went back the next week, did three minutes. Three minutes grew into five. And then... My first year, I really wasn't kind of scared of it. And by the second year, I was just getting more gigs. And I, here I am, what, like almost 12 years later. No, no, no. You're not going to skip past a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> and, all right. Interview does. Bye. Yeah. Ten minutes dun, 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 dun. Nah, nah, yeah. nah. You said a whole lot right there. What what city were you in when you went to that comedy store? To uh, that comedy show, show. Uh, Corona. Shout out to AD. Adrian McCovey. He he gave me my first my first time up. We're not going to throw any of those comics under the table tonight. No, AD is a, a blessing. You know, okay. he, he's the one that. No, no, I mean you. the ones that. Oh, she the said other that ones. Funny they shall rename name nameless, but you yeah. know who you are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know one of the, one of your funny uh, things that I love when you say uh, fucking white girls. You know, they'll fucking do what it takes. Uh, you're convincing Latinas to do. Yeah, yeah. I love when I heard that shit. I was cracking up so hard. Well, that comes from. It's, that's a true story. I mean. No, but it is. I mean, yeah. I had so. a white, a couple of white girls, and yeah, it's true. And then I had a couple of Chicanos too. So my brothers, I mean, shout out to them. Um, but they dated white girls growing up, and when I would go visit them, my dad raised my brothers, my mom raised me. My dad let them brawl out, do whatever they wanted to do. So my my house was the party house, my dad's house, and they always had white girls there. And I was just like, what the hell? And then one time, one of my brothers just broke it down. He's like, they do shit that like. <laughs> people won't <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that inspired that joke and then i did you know my own recon with my white home girls and yeah you know <laughs> killing it already it's funny when i say that joke about white girls doing stuff that latinas won't because all the guys that are with latinas get real quiet they're like oh this chick's up here telling our secrets you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's i mean i i'm more of a storyteller in my style but you know, I mean, the journey has been amazing. I mean, it's had it's, it's had way more ups than downs. I, I've been blessed with, you know, consistent work and and uh, great fans. And I just can't. I mean, I just 
right, I mean, what happened with TikTok these past two months ago was just crazy. Um, my brother Mario, shout out to my brother Mario. He's having a baby right now. Or his wife is. Today? Cindy, yeah. He's texting me right now. My Holy watch crap, is we got to get you out of here. No, he's in Texas. So oh, good. damn, okay. But, uh, uh, but uh, it's the fifth one. I mean, it's all right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had one kid, you had ten. It ain't ten. the oldest, it ain't the youngest anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's just but, uh, another one at this point. Right, no, yeah. I'm excited. But uh, he told me to put my videos on TikTok. Yeah. And I was like, all right, you know, I really don't have too much. So I said, all right, I'm just going to put an old Chola joke up there. And I did that. And um, it went, I mean, I, I did it like at night, like just like, como nada, like, a ver que you know, just like whatever. Went to bed. Didn't even hashtag the shit, I don't think. You know, I, I went to bed. I woke up. It was like at 30,000 views. Get the fuck out. Yeah. And I was like, huh? I remember my mom came over that day and I was like, mom, I don't know. I think she's like, well, Google. She's like, because my mom and I always have a joke about like, like if I put something, if I, post a picture of her and me online that she'll make it go trending. You know, she's like, well, you need to put that shit with me and then you'll start trending. You know? uh, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So she's like, Mija, are you really trending? I was like, I don't know. And she's like, well, Google, like, when is it officially viral? And I'm like, mom, please. So she Googles it. She's like, well, you're not at 250,000 views yet, Mija. You're not viral. I'm like, oh, way to humble me, lady. You know yeah, I mean? right. But by the end of her visit, we were up there and it was just like, growing and I was getting messages on Instagram. And, <coughs> um, you know, I think that's how one of your, uh, your, when your circle like saw me and yeah. you know met, referenced me to you and i was like dang you know so shout out to tiktok man that's really been helping me a lot lately you know i got a couple of gigs out of it good deal um i think that's it i've grown there faster than i ever have on instagram or anything like that yeah mm -hmm. that's amazing you know um yeah these these social media sites can help you out a great deal we've seen with those two little uh cuban kids with the uh, oh, island boy uh, and all yeah that are they cuban Unfortunately, Are you claiming yes, them? I, I'm claiming them. They're Cuban. <laughs> uh, I have to claim them by law. Yeah, I, I uh, guess so. But yeah, that was. Uh, have they reached out to you at all? No, I, they're too young to know who <laughs> you the went. hell. You don't know. They're too young. I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything from them. I don't know them, but uh, they are Cuban, so we gotta love them. Well, oh, shout out to your uh, nephews. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so tell me this. I mean, you've been how long you've been doing comedy now? I would say I'm going into my twelfth year. My first year, like I said, um, you know, I, I did that gig with AD. I did a couple more gigs. And then, like, the homeboy, um, Robert Morales, he was doing some comedy fundraisers. And I knew him from my partying days because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a seasoned vet when it comes to partying. Like, yeah. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And um, so he heard I was doing comedy, and he was kind of like, I can't believe you didn't tell me. You know, I do these comedy fundraisers. And this is why I love comedy because – one gig can open up so many doors. Mm. It could be a gig that you do for free. It could be a bar gig. Sure. You just never know. So from there, he introduced, uh, I did a comedy uh, fundraiser at this old club called Ambiente in Alhambra. And uh, that's where I met Sebastian Santina. I know Sebastian. Who's yeah. also a great proponent of comics in the Latino yes, community, you know? He crushes it. Yeah. He's... He'll fucking pick on you. <laughs> if you're in the crowd, he, he ain't gonna... That's Show you his, no mercy. But yeah. the, the way he could come up with it so fast, it's a, it's a genius. Yes. You yeah. know, it's I've like seen almost like it. a form of freestyle rap almost. Just, Matter of fact, I'm going to see him tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, at the at the Bruce's yeah. Uh, anniversary? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go see Yeah, him. I might cruise by there. Um, I think I will. So from there, I met Sebastian. Sebastian yeah. started giving me gigs. And I remember one time he gave me a gig like immediately, like the next day. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm nervous, you know, like because I wasn't used to doing comedy like so consistently like that. Yeah. And. At the time, I remember this. I've never told Sebastian this story, but I was living in Fullerton at the time, and I didn't have a car. I just wrecked my car, and he had called me and hit me up, and um, I was like, okay, well, let me get back to you. I got to try to find a ride. It took like two hours, and the spot was filled, you know, and he was like, either you're going to be serious about comedy or you're not, you know, like, this is an opportunity. Make it happen, you know, yeah. and he was like, I bet you, he was like, if it's if it was a down-ass, because it was a down-ass party, like, you'd probably find a way to get there, right? And I was like, shit, yeah, you're right, you know? So he kind of shook me up a little bit with that. And nice. so from there, you know, you just started meeting more people, meeting more people. And, and you just if you're consistent and you're good, you're going to get you're going to get gigs. And that's what I've been blessed with. So it's, been, it's been awesome. Yeah. Guys, you're tuned into the Havana Lounge podcast. Once again, welcome everybody coming in in the chat room, chopping it up. The beautifully talented Monique Flores is my guest today. She feels like a homegirl I've known for many, many years in a weird way. Um, talk to me about, about your influences. Who who inspired you, like, in, when you were younger, a younger comic coming up? 
Richard Pryor, those guys. What kind, well, what kind of definitely kind of on rotation growing up before I even knew I was going to be a comic was Delirious and Raw. Uh, just my brothers had that always on rotation. Um, and uh, I will say, um, you know, Carlos Mencia's 30 minute HBO special, Sino Latino doing that. You know, this, this is, these are three specials that my brothers always played. And, yeah. um, and from there, um, you know, to say that, like, uh, I watch comedy. I, I love this question because I really don't watch comedy specials. You know, I don't follow other comedians like that. Yeah. But I will say, like, uh, ad-libbing, comical observations, definitely my mom's brothers, uh, my Uncle Andy and my Uncle John and my Uncle Richard. Uh, those three dudes at a family barbecue could get you going on a story, and there'd be, like, a punchline at the end. And... They didn't even all have to be in the same room. Like my uncle Andy could start the story. Uncle John would come in the backyard and be like, what are you talking about? And then the brothers would just build on each other. And like yeah. the whole family would be like, yeah, yeah. And then what, what? And then it'd be like a, a freaking punchline at the end, you know? Yeah. And those guys are just always, always ready to crack jokes, you know? So them, um, definitely the OGs, you know, prior, I mean, prior, I've loved him in the toy. That's my reference to prior, you know? Sure. Uh, and cause I was younger back then. Um, but I would say those, I mean, of course, you got, you know, the others. I mean, growing up and watching I Love Lucy and things like that. But as far as uh, wanting to do comedy, I would say, uh, like, turning it into something. Yeah. It would be, like, I would just I would just say from watching my uncles, uh, watching, you know, uh, Eddie and being like, okay, I can do this. I, I can turn, I, I want to I wanna share my family story because I don't see yeah. it out there, you know? Now, would you say you were funny your first time out? Or were you like, fuck, I fucking sucked? No, I think I was. You crushed it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I had 60 people there to represent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that helps. But um, I think I was. You know, I, I recently watched my first time going up. A little uh, game film? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my, Study your game yeah, film and Yeah, and shit. you know what yeah. I like about her? She, she she was so fearless about myself in third person. Yeah, you, and I love it. I love it. Too. <laughs> but I, do, I, I do it frequently. Not yeah, I watched myself... You know, I did this joke about, and this was true, I did a joke about getting mistaken to be a bathroom attendant. I did a joke about, yeah, I was at my homegirl, like, had, like, a bar baby shower at some fucking golf course in OC. And I was in the restroom drying my hands. And this chick literally was like, oh, where? she's like, uh, I was, like, grabbing a paper towel. And she's like, oh, thank you. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, so I took the chick's money. I was like, fuck you then. You yeah, know? yeah, so, yeah. Give money. No yeah, doubt. So, Let's hear for the fuck shit. <laughs> yeah, you know? So I, I did a joke about that. I used to have a more Povich joke. Uh, but, and then I, I also recently watched my first time at, uh, at Ice House. You know, they filmed it. And I just, I mean, I didn't know where the mic was. I put the mic stand right in front of me. But at the end of the day, I just didn't care. And I was just saying whatever. I wasn't, I wasn't worried about, you know, because now, you know, there are things you have to, you know, you know, for the woke crowds, you know? Right. Yeah, I used to have a couple of jokes. I have an abortion joke that still kind of hits, but doesn't hit as the same. It really didn't hit in Texas that much, but I don't care. I said it anyway, you know? Yeah. But it's just, it's it's an art form that's trying to be censored, but, I mean... People are so sensitive these days mm -hmm. nowadays, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you... Do you get any backlash after any certain show? Well, I don't really keep it... I used to have a joke about uh, my mom, like, saying she was black in a past life. Yeah. Because uh, she smoked menthol. She named me Monique and she likes the McRib. <laughs> like, yeah, this yeah, is all yeah, true. yeah. This is all true. That's awesome. And then like, some people are like, ah, she doesn't even know black people. And I'm like, I don't, I mean, I'm just going with stereotypes. And you could say some shit about my people. It's probably true, you know? Yeah. Or even that Chola joke that I put up, right? <clears throat> mm hmm. Out of like the 450,000 views, I got like five or six haters. And those are the comments you pay attention to. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah some yeah. people are like, oh, it looks like she ate the cholas. I'm like, whatever, dick. Yeah. And then like the second person was like, she's not even funny. She's putting us down, you know? And I was like, but this is true. This is part of our culture. It wouldn't be so relatable and gotten that many views and that many likes if it, if it, somebody didn't see themselves or something in it. And no way is that taking down people. It's talking about how cholas are reformed and now they're medical assistants. Yeah. Tell me I'm lying. I love that joke. Tell me I'm I lying. Love that joke. Yeah, I so. cracked up. That was the one I was shown first uh -huh. that made me just fall in love with your work. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And then I just went in. And then that other white, that white girl shit is, is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, you know guy, who you are. Guys, Monique Flores is in a building. We're going case by case with her. We, and, and let me tell you, she's got next. I said it first. If they haven't said it yet, God damn it, understand what's going on here tonight. I need to know who you're talking to, Melo, because... Uh, 
I'm talking to the people. I'm talking about who who told you that I have next because uh, I need to talk to them. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I was talking to Lily Floor Art. She's an artist muralist uh -huh. in the city, real guerrillera, uh -huh. and uh, she does uh, phenomenal art, some depicting the Chicano and Latinx struggle and yeah. things like I think, that. I think I messaged a, a little bit with her on um, Instagram. So yeah. thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So um, I. I'm I'm stumped a little bit with you because you put it out there so quickly. You know what I mean? Like, um, what and that's you, the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you don't have any certain minutes here. No, you know, no, you don't. This is not a set at the improv. You got five minutes. We ain't doing that. Just so you know. All right. Just chill. We're going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I talk fast naturally, you know, do you? Oh yeah. This is me. But I like the way you set up your comedy mm -hmm. too. Cause you give it in enough to under like you set it up and then you give it to us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And some people you'll see them, some some comedians, they don't have that setup. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you gotta set up the joke. Like you don't can't just go into a joke. You gotta set it up. You guys uh for instance, you so I was, you know, mm -hmm. at the park the other day, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that that part of it. I think it's I'm I'm I I talk to the crowd and I'm at a point right now in my comedy where it's like I'm just comfortable. I know the laughs are going to come, you know. Um, I have a certain rhythm that I like, and if mm -hmm. I don't get it, you know, I was talking to the homie Jesus of Hobbit about this. We just did a gig at... Love Jesus. That's yes. my bro. Yeah, make sure you check out his special. It's streaming August 5th on HBO. That's Max. right. Check that out. That's the homie support. Yeah. To see somebody like that that you came up with... He plays there. golf with me. He does? Yeah. Well, look at him being distinguished. Yeah. Ish. Him and Concrete. Uh, we're trying to get Jerry Garcia out there. I'll go out there. I mean, I don't know what the heck I'm doing, but I'll go out we'll there. We'll show you what's up. Just come through. Okay, I'll bring my gear. I want the the hat with the little, little what is that? The little ball at the end, the little fuzzy ball. I'm going to come OG with it. The fuzzy ball. The fuzzy yeah, ball like, hat. Like, yeah, like, you know, like like Groundhog Day type shit. I don't know that that's a golf outfit. Yes, it is. Is it? Mm -hmm. You're gonna you, see it. We'll get you a visor. How's that? I that have. way we can put your ponytail through it. Okay. Yeah. All this right. is my this is my Jeep bun. You know, I drive a Jeep right now. Uh -huh. and my air conditioner. I got all the windows out. You know. Yeah. So that's. But uh, I like I like like I was telling Jesus about this on Thursday. Yeah. It's like I have a certain rhythm, and I, I it's more of like attack mode. Like even I was even talking to another comic about this. Like um, my set at the Laugh Factory in San Diego. I'm just so used to ta -ta -ta -ta, and sometimes. I do talk over my jokes, but I'm a, I'm a naturally fast joker, and I like my jokes to just be hit, 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 you know, versus there's a new style, which is more calm and, like, kind of, like, awkward, and then you find that the punchlines are very awkward, and then the crowd slowly gets to laughter, mm -hmm. and um, so for me, we were talking about, I was like, is this comic bombing? And they were like, and Jesus is like, no, it's just, it's not a style that you're used to. You know, it's going to, and then the next thing you know, they started getting laughs. They started getting laughs. And it's like, for me, that's not my style. I would not be comfortable with that. I need laughs like every few seconds. Gotcha. But there's a, there's definitely, I don't know how to call it, what to call it, but it's this new awkward type of very smart jokes. I'm not very smart jokes, very yeah. you know, inquisitive, very like, wow, that's, that's a great observation. But it's just, it's like a slow, it's like a slow laugh. And Ascend. I'm, yeah, it's like and a I'm, slow it's ascending like, okay. laugh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's a younger generation of comics, but I'm just naturally a fast talker, and and, and it's. I, don't I know. love your style, and it's all, it is about rhythm, mm -hmm. and I know all about rhythm because when I perform live, I have to have that rhythm too. So my DJ has to be really on cue. So when I do this, we got to move on, mm. and if I do this, the music got to stop. You know? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. It's, I'm like a, a band leader. You know what I mean? So. And now, what is it called, a maestro? Yeah, like a maestro, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I know all about the rhythm, and I'm glad that you're telling me this because I was wondering about your style. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I you know, that's something, too, like, like to, I don't follow the news or think of one-liners. I don't really necessarily, I just think of, like, you know, something that, that I see funny, you know? Like, when I was in Texas, for example, I was like, okay, well, this is going to be a very niche joke, but there's a there's an airline that uh, flies right now directly from South Texas to LA. 
And you could tell that it was all Rasa getting on the plane, you know? Uh -huh. And I was like, damn, they're going to be showing. Like, they were like, dude. And everybody was like getting that midnight plane to L.A. And, and there's kids and there's, you could just tell, like, everybody's going to Disneyland, you know? There's, yeah. they, they got, everybody's got their Disneyland gear. And I'm like, why did I choose this? Not nothing against Rasa, but this plane, man, it was packed. It was like a quinceanera in the air, bro. Yeah. Like, it was just not, and that's one thing about South Texas, McAllen areas. You're not going to see a white person for days. But I just started to rob, rob, rob. Shout out to McAllen. Island, yes, Texas, that, absolutely. Yes, that's where my family's from originally. So my parents are from South Texas. And my grandparents are from South Texas. My great grandparents are from South Texas. Yeah. Get down. Shout out to Texas. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just came from here. I was in El Paso. El Paso, yeah. yeah. I'm going to probably be going back real quick for some business stuff this weekend, but sure. I'll be back. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it. you know, so I, would, so I was just taking observations from that. Like, okay, yeah. I'm going to write about like a Mexican airline, you know? Like, they just have they're selling raspas or something you know it's it's a little hacky at first but i'm, I'm gonna get there that's my writing process when when you know? obviously you're inspired by real life shit mm -hmm. right but when you get home and you're starting to write the bit and you're writing the skit uh, you guys call it a bit right mm -hmm. what comes first the idea of what you had or did you follow it up already in your mind and you wrote something down maybe put it in your phone notes and then i would you, say and the then bullet you point. embellish mm -hmm. on that yeah exactly that's what it is you know because I have this joke about my dad having kids, new kids, and it's a, it's it's just a one little thing about, you know, what 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 inspired that joke was like. I'm talking to my dad, you know, and and he's talking about how they're going to Disney World because my little sister is in cheer competitions and all this, you know, and I'm like, oh well, fuck, you know, I never got to do that, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. he was working hard, and then so yeah. like, so like that joke grew into like how they've went six times. They haven't gone six times, you know, but like yeah. it just, it's just not, it's a thought, you know, like, okay, I'm going to say I didn't even have the Disney channel and this bitch again went six times, you know what yeah, I mean? But, yeah. and, but it's true. It's very true because, you know, you see for me, it's like, okay, you're not supposed to feel a certain way about that, but I do feel a certain way about that, you know? So I, yeah, I have brothers and sisters too. And only one of us was able to go to private school, the little one. Mm -hmm. And the me, my sister and my brother send dog are like, we didn't get that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, let me talk about it on stage. I'll get you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's an embellishment because I, I go on to say like all these things that my dad didn't do for me, but he's done for the new kids. And I just did a show in McAllen. That's where my dad lives. Yeah. And I was selling my merch after and then fans were coming out. They're like, hey, can we take a picture with you? And then I was like, yeah. And then they heard me reference him to dad as dad, you know, yeah. and they're like, that's your dad. And I was like, yeah, they're like, now he's taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that too. But then they're like, hey, man, why'd you do her like that? Why don't you take her to Disney World? <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, yeah, yeah like it was just funny. And But uh, yeah, they, yeah, they're taking pictures with him. My mom, too. We, I did a show in South Texas and I have a joke about my mom and how she was and, you know, and they're. they're they love it. You know, they, they, she, she was taking pictures as well, but it's definitely a bullet point. Let me write it into a story. Where is the funny? Where's their pain in that? And how can I embellish it a little bit to make it more relatable and laughable and then trying it out on stage Yeah. because you can think something's hilarious. And then once you say it out loud, it's like, oh, well, you know, yeah, yeah. it's like it can bomb. What, what's your favorite part of, of being a comedian? That laughter. That's that laughter, the, the... oh man, it is, man. And I've done some drugs in my life, people. But yeah. that is like <laughs> the best high. Absolutely. You know, I, I remember that first time I got off stage, I was like, it's just a rush. You know, that laughter, that affirmation when they're done, people saying, you know, I mean, getting that attention, let's be real, you know, <laughs> getting that, hey, well, man. Well, that, that shows me that you're doing it for the right reason. Yeah. Like, you didn't say money, the fucking money. Nah. You know what I mean? Because the I money mean, will follow. If you mm -hmm. do your cr craft well, the money will come. Yeah. And it can get frustrating as a comic. I mean, I, I know we all deal with that. It's like, okay, like this is, this is, I want to do this. This is my passion, but I got to pay my bills type thing, yeah. you know? And, and, um, when to say yes and no to a gig or, you know, damn, but maybe you get that FOMO, that fear of missing out because like I said, you never FOMO. know. FOMO. Yeah. Did you just learn that? I just learned that for the first time. <laughs> Someone's old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. So, so, you know, it's like, it's, it's always that battle of like, oh man, I, I kind of want to not, I, I have to work or what, what is this all for? Because, you know, there does, to say that there hasn't come a time where I'm like, dude, like I, I do need some money, you know, like I would appreciate yeah. some money from this gig. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if, if there's anybody out there, I would just say, Hey man, uh, 
LA is very saturated, so don't quit your day job and just keep on that hustle of comedy because people have come out here thinking, you know, whatever, they're going to get rich on gigging all around LA. And yes, if you were able to do that, you're very blessed, but uh, keep on post mating until something else happens. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's just so. No, it's actually a, everything is a grind, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're entertaining, playing sports. But what one thing I found doing the music is very similar to what you just said. I mean, <clears throat> you have to um, not only put in the time to your, for your craft, right? Um, you have to get good at this shit. You know what I mean? Because there's a big line. Mm -hmm. And if you get out of the line for one second and you think you can come back later, you got to start at the back of the line again. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I could, yeah just to stay relevant to to maintain your 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 hustle you know yeah do you believe in that saying that um I, I stern talks about this all the time i'm a huge howard stern fan but he talks about um you know you have to become an expert at something you have to practice so many thousand hours you know until you can consider yourself an expert i think it's like ten thousand hours is or that something right like that yeah you know and i i think about that and i'm like okay because you know he has different comedians on and and um what I see in a, you know, you know, what a lot of successful people in the music and in, in the entertainment industry at all, they all have one thing. A lot of them said that like this was like do or die for them, you know, like they had to Well, do yeah, that. I mean, when you think about it, if you if you don't mind me. Sure. Um it's your sure It's moment. sort of like a I I try to explain it to people. When you when you step out and believe in yourself and your ability to pay bills out of sheer creativity, to me, the way I feel it's almost like an act of God. Mm. It really is not a, a act that God helped you with. You, your godly inner self believes in yourself so much that you can turn it into paper, turn it into dough, turn it into touring, and and the the power in self belief. You know what I mean? Yeah. To get it done, because let's face it. I mean, it's. I always say it's easier to have a job than to believe in yourself. That's true. There's, there's one's more definitely more risky than the other. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I salute you. Thank you. I uplift you. Thank I you. commend you, and I thank you for being here, guys. Blessed. Thank you so much for having me. No, 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 man. The talented Monique Flores is in the building. Um, before we we let you go here, um, you want to tell us where to find you, how we can find you, where you're gonna be, what's your next tour. Where you going? Oh, let's do it. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, just say mo. I think it's right here. Um, so it's just say m o underscore. Um, I'm on TikTok at Monique Flores four one one. I got some shows coming up. I'm gonna be in. Uh, and I gotta come see you. Yeah, I'm gonna be in. Um, we'll have a big birthday show coming up at the uh, Bellflower Comedy Club. And that's the Stand Up Club in Bellflower. I'm I gonna, know it. I'm gonna be headlining that one September 9th with my boy Cizo. Our Yas comedy show is back. We used to do this comedy show monthly at the Ice House okay. in Pasadena. Yeah. But it got, you know, COVID and then it, now it's under construction. So I'm going to be uh, there on September 9th. And between that, I will be um, in San Fernando Valley um, next week, two weeks from now, okay. uh, for the homie Victor Vasquez's show. But anything you guys can find me on, on my Instagram, I post. Yeah. So, um, and I got another gig with Rudy Moreno after that in Boyle Heights. And then uh, I believe I have something else in Woodier after that. So I'm going to be close to L.A. All, all next month. But the big show, if you want to see me, um, September 9th, birthday show. I'm going to be 40. Yeah. 40. My cuarentanera. Right, Let's remember, do this. I remember 40. Let's shout you out. 40 is a big deal. Yeah. That's the segue to 55 where I'm at right there. Jeez. Yeah. So, so enough respect, baby girl. Thank you for coming thank through. You. Uh, guys, we've been... She, Show you, show you love. Show you love. Show you Can I ask a question? Yeah. What what's what's with the baseball? Well, I have jittery fingers. Oh, okay. I have, I'm like, just exposing my hands you. Gotta, <laughs> yeah, you kind of are. Like you, you've got it out of me that I'm claustrophobic. Earlier. I have that Dr. Phil. Like people are always like, why do people always like just tell Mo, Mo their stuff? I was like, I have like this aura. At least call me Dr. Phil at the club because yeah. we'd be partying, and next thing you know, there'd be a guy telling me all his problems. Well, the the, the other thing is. When I was a kid, I was being scouted by a man who recently died, Mike Brito of the Dodgers. What? And I was a pitcher, so I, I kind of always had my fingers on the ball and doing shit. And I always got to have like a baseball around me, not not too far. 
And it's your, it's your uh, comfort. What do they call it? And so when people have the comfort animal, that's your comfort animal. Yeah, exactly. You can say that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, just jittery fingers or I'm smoking a cigar. Well, that's you know, probably better like than that. a cigar. Yeah. I mean, at this Health point, wise. I'm not going to make it to the big leagues anyway, but it still helps in a weird way. You could way. have been Fernando Valenzuela, but you chose the rap game instead. That part. That part. Mm. Thank you, baby girl. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming Great through. Times. Anything else you want to get off? Uh, off your chest? You got think. a new joke you want to try with us? Any new jokes? No, I don't got any new jokes right okay. now. You guys got to come see me for that stuff. Let's I'm working go. on this new bit about my grandma, but um, yeah, like I said, if like I tell people at the end of my show, you're gonna leave knowing everything about me because I leave it all out there. That's right. You know, from my parents, my brothers, to my cousins, all of them. They're all on blast. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Leave it all on the playing field of life, right? That's what's up. I love it, guys. The beautifully talented Monique Flores has been my Thank guest. You. Um, guys, I want to take this time before we go to thank my sponsors, AV Chevy. If you need the Tahoe, the Vet, the Chevrolet, whatever they got, you can go get it at AV Chevy. See my man, Justin down there. He'll give you the deal. I myself have to see you, Justin. I'm looking for a new Tahoe now since my Range Rover took a dump last night. Shout out to Cilantro Lime, downtown LA with that mellow man inspired Cuban torta. It's got everything in there except lion's meat i swear to god for real for real go so fuck you just one and done can you share it or is can... it's so huge you have to share it because you just it's Cilantro so much lime, is that the one in these in the santi alley it is yeah yeah i know that's at. i've been there yeah okay I'm that's going them there. that's absolutely I them yeah the mellow I, the, the torta the mellow mayonnaise inspired cuban torta yeah all right get that does it come with a cigar it doesn't Come fuck with me. I'll give you a cigar on Wednesdays playing golf. I will. And uh, lastly, I want to thank uh, Sterling Images and uh, Daily Ads for their sponsorships and taking care of the show. Guys, I have been Mellow Man Ace. This has been Monique Flores. Thank you so much. Show your love, goddammit. Uh, we are out of here. And remember, in the words of the great Curtis Mayfield, that your dreams are your only scheme. So keep on pushing and move on up. On that note, Solomon, take us the fuck out of here. Yes. That was fun. Thank you. You're welcome, baby.